Thank you guys so much for coming to see this film tonight. I know the foundation doesn't usually show documentaries, but um, the fact that Kevin worked with so many amazing performers and was a performer himself, um, I, it, I felt like it resonated and it was great to hear your reaction. But if you guys could just introduce yourselves to the audience, that would be great. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tiffany. I directed the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Woo I'm Troy Surratt. I'm a producer on the film. Mm -hmm. I'm Barry Lee Moe. I work with Tori Amos and got involved in the project uh, through Tiffany and a friend. Hi, I'm Veronica Webb. I'm here because all these wonderful people were kind enough to invite me to be in the movie. And I was also lucky enough to have Kevin make me beautiful over and over and over again. Thank you guys. So I guess let's just jump right in. And, and how did this project come about? Like what, what, what possessed you to make this film on Kevin? Uh, I have a background in makeup and uh, met you doing your makeup. And That's true. <laughs> always was inspired by Kevin, of course, and had his books always. And um, when we finished making Fall to Rise, uh, we said, what's the next project? And I started picking away at Kevin. I love that she's telling this to me like I don't know all this yeah. already. <laughs> but let's talk specifically about how Troy and Barry and Verona yes. came, came to it. Because this film like, happened like so organically, besides you coming into the office one day and saying, I want to do a documentary on Kevin. And yeah. I'm like, how w are well, we going to do that? Well, the day that we decided that, that this would be a good idea to like start, he, there was a um, retrospective of Kevin's work at the makeup um, show. And so Kelly, our um, then intern, went and shot that. And then we just went through the book and said, let's just start asking people. And one person that I really, really, really said, we can't do this without talking to Troy. And um, he answered my email after like five billion times. She's very persistent. Yeah. Like, I would have given up on Cher like the first time they were like, no. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and so when Troy and I met, and it was so funny because his answer back to me was in an email at 111, and a Tory song came on the radio. I'll never forget. And you and I talked, and then not soon, not soon, not too far after that, we interviewed Tori and Victoria and Veronica. We, and we did them in October of 2015 if you can believe it. And um, we have been making it, cut, and then we cut together the interviews, and yeah, here we are. Yeah, the film took four years, but what I'm trying to get at is, like, there was this mafia of makeup artists and hair professionals that, like, wanted to see this film come to light, yeah. and Troy was so instrumental being Kevin's protege. Troy, can you talk well, about what, what you Troy thought? knew Veronica from working together, and then yeah. you, that's how I think we got Was to... Veronica our first ask? Yeah, one of, one one of, of them. them, yes. Yeah. 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 But Trey, can on. you talk about, one, what it was like working with Kevin, and two, because I, I know this was a passion of yours to get a film made about him. Yeah, I mean, I think that when Tiffany approached me at first and I sort of ignored the emails, I just wasn't ready to go there or to, to, to delve into to the sacred part of that experience. And upon meeting Tiffany, um, I knew that her heart was pure and in the right place. We talked one afternoon and we laughed and we cried. And there was a lot of crying. There, there was, was like a, a lot, lot of, of lunches. <laughs> there was a lot of crying. Um, and, uh, and at the end of the meeting, I was like, well, I have to think about it. And I went home and I, I was in some random place. I, I, I sort of prayed for a sign. And I was in some random place, and uh, a Tory song came on. And I was like, oh, that's, Weird. that's my sign. Crazy. And so, um, yeah, so I think I called you back on a Monday, and I was like, let's do it. Yeah. And Barry, like, again, you, uh, Tori is so amazing in the film. And if you don't know, Barry works, you know, on many TV shows and sort of straddles celebrity and TV. Um, 
how did you get Tori to to want to do this? Because I know she like that's the thing about this. Like Kevin was so revered and loved that so many people there was such a trust issue that it was like uh, this whole universe became this crazy family where we became part of Kevin's family gradually. How did you get Tori to to want to do this? I know she had talked to you about about this, but had like reservations. Well, I think something I always noticed in Tori's life in the ten years I've been with her is that Kevin was and still is a huge part of her life. So as much as it's hard for her, I think, to revisit those times, when Tiffany reached out, it was kind of, to me, super important because Kevin was somebody that kind of shaped my life, even though I never met him, and still is somebody somebody that I look up to. That it was kind of my mission to get Tori involved as much as I could. So whatever I could do to kind of plant that seed, and it's funny because watching this, some of the footage of Kevin from his like home movies is in Tori's house where Tori and I had kind of the final conversation about whether or not to do that. And during that trip, we stumbled upon some Polaroids that were Ke Kevin's that he had taken and just random signs like that. I think like Troy and Tiffany are talking about like these signs from Kevin kind of dropped in and it all kind of organically happened from that point on. And Veronica, what you were, what your interview was so intelligent and so amazing. And I felt like you, like, so, like the, the, the women, like the, the, the supermodels, like rallied, like they were like, we're there. And I was blown away because like I grew up with all of you like on my wall and <laughs> you were all like incredible. Like we had much, you know, there, no one was difficult, but there were some people that just still blow my mind. I'm like, why didn't you want to do this? But like, what? What possessed you to come and, and talk? Well, no one is incredible alone. Um, and it's people like Kevin, it's people like Troy, it's people like Steven Mizell, it's the designers, it's the photographers, it's the people who lock themselves away in rooms for hours and hours and hours and suffer and practice and plan and work over and over and over again for that one moment, you know, where the lights go on and that person sits in the chair and they give you everything. Um, and I think, you know, in the years that I worked with Kevin, what I loved about him was that when he came, he gave you everything, 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 everything. You weren't just getting makeup. You were getting his soul. You were getting his family. You were getting the part of him that was lonely and frightened and afraid that, you know, there wouldn't be a tomorrow or that he didn't matter or that no one wanted him. And in that moment, everything was beautiful and everything was magic. And no matter what any of us had been through in our lives or even before we walked in that room, you know, the pots opened, the brushes came out, the glitter went in the air and life was magically good. And when you, uh, you know, as a model, like when you sit there and someone's doing your makeup, it's really intimate. You know, that person is in your face. They are up in your pores. They are under your eyelids. They're looking inside your mouth. They're in. They're, they're inside. Uh, they're. It's incredibly intimate. It's like you're. When, even if you have an infant, your infant really isn't that close to you. I joke that we touch people in places that their mothers and lovers never touch them. <laughs> right? I mean, or would even want to. Uh, <laughs> Nose hairs. Yeah, all that Eye stuff. Burgers. But, you know, you really get to know, you know, you, you really get to know people and you really get to feel their spirit. And you really, and, you know, there's no other reason to put makeup on someone other than to make them happy. That's really, you know, why you're doing it is to make someone happy and to give them confidence. And I think, um, you know, we all carry that inside of us. Like I remember my first Italian Vogue booking. It was Kevin's first Italian Vogue booking and it was with Steven Mizell. And Kevin and I were in the dressing room literally holding on to each other. We were so scared, you know, because it was our big break. And it took him two and a half hours to do my makeup or maybe longer. Um, and then at the end, it was perfect. And, you know, I still, you know, I still remember, I can see the table, I can, I 
I remember everything about the experience. And even like sitting here now, there's always a part of Kevin, he's one of those people, that there, there's always a part of him that's with you. Like there's always a part of Azadine that's with me. There's always a part of, um, you know, my mother that's with me. There's, there's just parts of Paris that are always with me. And Kevin is one of those people who's always with me, you know, and even now, like, I have on a face full of Kevin um, <laughs> and Mark Cornwall, who works on my makeup now, who's an amazing, phenomenal makeup artist. You know, we all we all feel um, part of him. It's weird. It's kind of like, you know, being an American or something. It's just like something that's in. It's just like something that's in your DNA. It's like something that's in my fashion DNA. It's like I come from Kevin country. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. Tiffany, because you tell the story, and I know you tell it a lot, so you don't want to tell it, but you, you met Kevin. Would you tell us the story? Okay. I, uh, <laughs> uh, my best friend, Lauren, um, was casting background for Sex and the City and said, um, I'm going to get you on Sex and the City tomorrow because it's, um, Kevin O'Guan is going to be, um, on the show and I was like he's working on the show and she's like no he's on the show I was like okay always so, important to do background yeah so I was like all right and she's like and it'll give you sag points and I was like okay <laughs> I'd throw that part in there that was true and for sag foundation so then I um went and waited and waited I did not care about anything else that was going on whatever was happening here but he wanted to meet Sarah Jessica Parker or whatever and I was like um and Lauren came up with the headset on and everything, and she said, Mr. O'Quan will see you now, Miss Weigel. And I was like, oh, yes, okay. And I ran down, and she took me back behind the tents and everything, and um, there was Kevin, and he stopped doing Sarah Jessica's makeup and came over, and I was like, I can't believe he's coming over here. And his hands came over here, and he took the time to ask me questions. I was like, what is happening right now? You have work to do. And, um, you know, he was just so nice. And it was like a moment that you just never forget. She was kind of pissed, right? She was, yes. <laughs> you don't leave somebody doing their, she was doing, he was to working. It's, <laughs> but he went, but I think told to me point, later that he was always, you know, he always needed that injection of, you know, let me talk to a fan, you know, right now. So, Because I feel like we carry, I never uh, obviously met Kevin, but having worked on the film for four years and, and lived and breathed, like, I feel, I feel Kevin, you know, with me. And I think yeah. about, you know, what he would, you know, how, what he would do and, you know, all that kind of stuff, how he would have acted and behaved and what we would have talked about and all that. It's really yeah. cool. What do you, why is makeup important for the performer? Like, why, you're all practitioners and receivers of the art of makeup. Why, why, why is it important? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? I think that it's empowering. I think that at its best, it um, allows the subject to um, express their individuality and beauty. Um, and at its worst, it's a mask. Um, but, yeah. I mean, I think makeup is a personality. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Troy. You probably do so much makeup that sometimes you, like, you can't see the forest for the trees. It's hard to express what you do because that's what you do. You don't talk about it. You do it, right? But um, as a recipient of it, makeup is a personality. Makeup is like... <sighs> all the parts of your face and your of your bone structure and also of your interior thoughts that you want to express that you can make real in a way that and so it makes like you know it just it instantly creates a mood and it starts a conversation it's like a painting you know as soon as you walk into a room and there's a piece of art on the wall the conversation starts in your head mm. so it's sort of like um, a preamble and it's this kind of like, uh, it's a kind of like, a, it's a greeting card. It's a Magna Carta. It's something that you can put on your face every day to express whatever world it is that you want to step into. And I also think that makeup is like Prozac, you know? It can be a drug, you know? On days when I don't feel so good, if I put some lashes on, you know, it gives me some get up and go. <laughs> I think I was going to kind of tag on to that, that so much of what <clears throat> we do in the beauty industry is is more than just what we do to someone's hair or put on their face. It's about the experience and the time we spend with that person. And you can show up to someone's hotel room for a job after they've had the worst night of their life, a terrible fight, or someone's passed away in their family, and 
the two hours you spend with that person or more shapes their day and it, it changes maybe their outlook on something. And then they leave it feeling the most beautiful version of themselves. And it's a therapy session that has a bonus of you walking out looking great. It's, oh. it's an emotional experience as well as like a physical experience. And Barry, we were talking earlier too about, because um, Barry's working on a show with, with Giovanni Ribisi and Margot Martindale and that experience of like maybe not editorial or music video, but like the day-to-day -day like act, actor uh, I'm you know doing a guest spot on a show and I'm gonna go in and I'm like really nervous and I'm going into this crazy trailer and it's rickety and there's the star of the show and oh what do I say to him and then that Barry pops up and he's like hey so you're playing like a crazy killer today and you have like 20 minutes to sort of have this moment and how important that is for an actor could you speak to that process Barry in the yeah I mean a lot of what we do too is help to shape actors performances in terms of like kind of bringing their character full 360 and shaping who that that character may be and it can be little things like adding a little bit of grease to someone's hair or you know just a little bit of lipstick from time to time but I think we take that experience and make it whole um, when there's not always a lot of time to to do that and I see Tiff I see like because Tiffany's a working makeup artist like you go to work and you'll be like I did you know, the Blackstone Group's headshots today and I want to kill myself. Like people that, ne no, sorry, Blackstone Group. I'm never getting any money from you for a film. But Do no, but these- Do not tweet that. Do not tweet yes, that. Yes, don't tweet that, please. I'll never work again anywhere. Sorry, Blackstone Group. But no, my point being that the Blackstone Group, these people never wear like makeup, some of these uh, CEOs and stuff, right? Yeah. So d can you speak to that, that experience of people that never wear makeup? Well, it's funny because the different personalities and the different forms of media that we have to work in is like with models, I, I think it's a collaboration and you're creating art and, and people are more patient, right? And the models are like the canvases. And then for characters, it sort of gives validation when you do an actor's makeup, you're sort of validating, like the actor might feel silly for taking everything so seriously. And then it's like, oh no, it really is this serious because I'm hired to add to your character. You know, and I have a whole career behind that. And then for corporate culture, I do so many like women in high executive positions and they feel embarrassed. It's so sad to me. They feel embarrassed that they're getting makeup done. They don't want anyone to know that they've even hired a makeup artist, you know, and they want to act like they don't need this, this, um, Mask, enhancement. enhancement, you know what I mean? That it's all about their mind and uh, presentation. And and I try to tell them that that's all part of it and they should feel their best and, you know, there's no shame in any of that. You know, it's it's all part of of what we're presenting to each other. And, and Veronica, you've, you've done both. You've done big films with Spike Lee. And I, I mean, do you, do you see any difference between what, um, you know, what it means and in, in what medium? Movie makeup is a whole different thing because unless you're doing something, I've never done like a sci-fi movie or a fantasy movie or a period movie, which would be much better for me because I like makeup, um, you know, and I like to see makeup go to like, you know, I, I like to see makeup go in very creative directions. Um, and you wear much less makeup in a movie than you do like say on a fashion set. So, um, I mean, to really speak to movie makeup, like, it's not my thing. Sorry. <laughs> where did where did Kevin fit in? Like, what was he giving with makeup? I mean, that's a question we asked in the edit room all the time. Like, m more than makeup was like a working title for the film for a long time. Like, what? Why was he driven to to do this? Why? Like, he never stopped. Like, I think about like what you, on the red carpet do you see makeup artists walking down? The, the the runway with Angelina Jolie or any of these people anymore? No, you you don't. I mean, I'm I'm asked this all the time, and you know, I didn't know him. I just know this sixty miles of transcription, and like what I like the conclusion I have come to for myself is that he, when he did Janet, he was Janet. When he did Madonna, he was Madonna. When he did, and he was them, and he was important, and this mattered, and you know, you like, you know, it is so intimate and you're exchanging you're in the same space and I think he just became 
one with that creation and it kept him alive. Well, if you don't feel that way about what you're doing, like if you don't feel like that's your hair up there, you know, like like when you see your your person who you've done, if you don't feel like that hair is you when it's on the runway or that makeup is you when it's on the runway, something's wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, because that that is you. That's your art. That's your spirit. Your time. Your expertise made manifest, and it's out in the world moving. And if you don't feel like that's you, you need to be doing something else. That's really. That's really it's a really good point. Yeah. And it's also a huge responsibility for you know the person who you work on. It's like you have to. I mean, like I have a lot of respect for people who make clothes and who do makeup and who do hair. Um, the person who you work on really, really has to honor what you do for them and what you give them because that gives that gives your profession dignity, and that and that gives just you know just honor among thieves, like you know dignity among you know dignity among the clowns, and I always tell people um, when they get into the business, the most important thing is every you know make sure that you make everyone else's work matter. I, well said. I think about that too. Like after making this film, like going in, you're like, oh, I have an audition for this. Like, oh god. But I'm like, what would Kevin do? <laughs> what would Kevin O'Quinn do? And you know, it does change my my perspective for sure. Um, you guys were touching on something about these. Uh, something that's fascinated me about him is these incredible transformations that he did. Why? Why did he want to make Winona Ryder, already a famous actress, into? Uh, Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah, what what was that? Why? More, more. Troy, you talk. No, I think that Tiffany has a really... I, I wanted to just add to... That in the 15 years since Kevin's passing and my thinking about, you know, um, I think that his pursuit of beauty was... Uh, it, this is maybe more psychological, but I think his pursuit of beauty was perhaps because he felt that he came from an ugly place, being adopted and abused in Louisiana. And I always felt that there was a, if I can just make things look better, they will be better approach to his pursuit of, of beauty and makeup. And um, yeah, I just wanted to add that. Yeah, that's really important. We've talked about that a little yes. bit. And, um, and uh, uh, he was icons on icons. Yeah. I think you have the best <laughs> viewpoint on that, so. I forgot it. No, that, that you know, for I, Kevin, you know, go ahead. for Kevin, just doing Winona Ryder wasn't enough. He had to do Winona Ryder as Elizabeth Taylor. And there were all of these women that he sort of couldn't work with because they had passed. So he made his contemporary clients into these, you know, divas and icons. Yeah. Well, I also think it's like those are the faces that he grew up studying. Mm -hmm. And those are the faces that he probably painted on his face. You know, because we all know that's what goes down, right? <laughs> um, so I'm sure that those were the faces that he painted on his face. And then when he got the faces that he could really make look like those faces, I think that that was really exciting. Yeah. And I remember exactly where I was when I heard Kevin died. I was laying on the couch about to give birth shortly to my daughter, who's now 15. Um, and my agent called me to say, I, you know, I hope you're laying down. I said, well, I'm getting ready to have a baby in a minute. I mean, what, you know, what do you think I'm doing? Um, and he said, you know, I want to let you know that Kevin passed. And I was quiet. And he said, are you OK? And I said, you know, I know that he's up there, like, doing all those faces in heaven. And they're all in line, just like we were at Versace. And they're, and, <laughs> you know, and they're all getting that magic right now. That's beautiful. I never even thought about that. I was like, why did he leave so soon? Why does he? He's like, because I want to do Marilyn Monroe. I got to do, you know, Clara Bow. Yeah, I got news. I got to take it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Barry, can you talk about what fascinates me about Kevin is just the longevity of how you, because you've been with Tori, uh, Troy, you work on Uma Thurman, a number of different people you work with. 
Um, how does that, what, what's the dynamic of that relationship like? How, how does that happen, that friendship? But it's also like you, you were a well, big thing for you, Tiffany, is the, the client, service client relationship. The makeup artist is an artist, but at the same time, that's what's tragic about the film and Tori illustrates so well is that at the same time, it's a little bit like, hey, you're my buddy and everything, but you're maybe in a bad place right now and you work for me, so bye bye. So how does how does that relationship like grow and foster and you know someone like Tori that you work with someone that you maintain this friendship with that they call just you? Well, <clears throat> I mean, I think I got really lucky in meeting Tori. I met her, you know, five years after Kevin passed, and at the time that I started working with her, I didn't know their relationship. I didn't know their history. I I had seen her in his books. And I was young, I was from Wisconsin, like I didn't know anything about the industry. And meeting her, I got really lucky because she kind of took me in and someone who maybe didn't know as much as they should have at a time when I was entering into the music world with her, she, she took me under her wing and, and guided me along the way. And she's an extremely loyal person and our relationship was more than just what we did in the morning to get ready, it was, it was a friendship. and something that became close very very quickly and i think good friends like that you know you don't you don't leave them them fast they stay with you for life that's what's so beautiful about your that your relationship with tori but about kevin's life is it like it's also i think his downfall is it crossed so many it crossed so many boundaries like we talked to garen and he was like when you give out your personal number you know who would do that that's like the beginning of the end but kevin was like i'll you know he was trying to sort of like it was like love and friendship and all these things that it's very rare. Um, let's take one let, one more question, then we're gonna we have a, a few questions from the audience. Oh, two questions. Um, uh, what what last for you guys? What would Kevin be doing now? What do you think he'd be doing now? Well, let's see. I think it would definitely be beyond contour at this point, since that's been co-opted <laughs> like crazy. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can see how good he was on film, right? And you can see what a magnetic personality that he had. Um, you know, I'm sure that he would be doing very spectacular tutorials because he's really kind of the godfather of that. I think that um, you would have a whole line of makeup that is incredibly, like, you know, theatrical like body gossamer makeup I think he would be doing you know so that we could like put makeup like we could spray something out of a bottle and it would like make us glitter and glow from head to toe somehow It'd be like <laughs> flexible net um, and you know I think that he would I, I think he would still be beating the stars I really do because um, you know when you got it you got it you know and until you don't feel like you know crouching over anymore you can do it yeah, um, I think he would be dominating social media. Um, mm -hmm. He was really sort of with the Polaroid camera. He was the original Instagram. Mm -hmm. And um, I think he was the first makeup artist to sort of pull the curtain back and allow people to take interest to see um, what was going on backstage or behind the scenes. And um, I think he would have continued to do that with YouTube tutorials and social media and um, no offense to Mario, but the Kardashians would probably have him in tow. <laughs> or the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, we have a question for the director. Uh, Ke and this is a good segue into talking about the release of the film. Kevin published a how-to book about his work. I think it's out of print. Will it be reissued? Oh my gosh, yes! With the release of the film, or will it be released online? And I just well, added this, and plant. when will the film be released? And P.S., thank you for remembering Kevin. It's this very is, sweet. This is a plant. From no. uh, TH. Um, guys, there is a rumor that may be true that um, they're going to reprint Art of Makeup. Um, which is the original book, which is beautiful. And um, one of the author, I mean, the author of that book was like, you know, maybe we can talk about this all happening at the same time because today we decided to go with the company, The Orchard, for the release of the film. 
So okay. you are the first to know. First to know. It'll, it'll be out uh, later this year. Yep. Um, and I have a question from Gil for Veronica. Favorite look Kevin did for you? Mm. I want to know that. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, I used to go over to Kevin's apartment, and he would do my eyebrows when he had eyebrow ideas. He's like, are you doing anything? Do you want to come over? Can I do your eyebrows? Mm. Okay. You know? So then I would go over there, and I would get, like, scalped. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh I mean you know for me like there were so many great fashion show looks especially like Todd Oldham because you know he really went to town at Todd Oldham um, I loved lo I'm sorry there's several um, then the Isaac Mizrahi unzip show with um, the hot pink blush and the red lips that was great um, but then like the the round smoky eye that he did for me with, um, on the Italian Vogue shoot with Steven Mizell, which was our favorite Vogue shoot. I mean, I think I slept in that makeup for two days. Mm. <laughs> of course. Uh, well, I just want to thank you guys. I want to thank this amazing panel. Uh, thank you, honey, for wanting to make this film because I was like, what? Uh, and thank you guys for coming out tonight um, and tell your friends. Thank you guys.